We are entering into a last seminar today, Yay. which is presented by Dr. Philip Mollica. And um, he's going to be speaking about oxygen ozone therapy in your office. And he graduated from uh, medicine and dentistry in New Jersey. And before dental school, he received his master's degree in human anatomy at Farley Dickinson University. He's an author, researcher, and a speaker. On a personal note, I went to his office recently for a seminar. It's very informative, but extremely educational. I recommend everyone who wants to go to the next level on your practice, consider contacting Dr. Malika and learning the, the, the real science of ozone and how you can use it in your office and in your person. Thank you very much. So, uh, what I'm going to do now for the next uh, hour is discuss how we've been using oxygen ozone therapy in the arrestment of periodontal disease, which has been pretty exciting, lots of fun, and it works great. So imagine arresting periodontal disease with only oxygen and water, the two primary nutrients of life. We had tremendous discussions this weekend on all different types of great detoxifications and different chemicals and vitamins and what do you use for this and that's and that's the classical conversations we have all the time. But ladies and gentlemen, primarily let's get down to foundational protocols, which are two important factors in life, which are oxygen and water. These are important primary nutrients. You can do a lot of great things using these two elements and manipulating them for our purposes in health and well-being. So in integrated biologic dentistry, treatments really should be, first of all, safe and effective, non-toxic, ideally no side effects, allow the patient to heal themselves, and of course ultimately reaching a state of biologic homeostasis. Now the important point in oxygen ozone therapy, and we stress this to our students, is that oxygen ozone therapy is a piece of the puzzle. It's not unbelievable. It is unbelievable, but not everything. So there's a different piece of the puzzle when you're talking about therapies. And we think about therapies, biologic, as a synergy of therapies. We want everything kind of working in the same direction. So when we treat our perio patients, we do use cytoprotective therapies or infusions. We use procaine, B12, folic acid, heal remedies to help us support the tissue, our oxygen ozone therapy. We nutritionally support the patient because what you see in the mouth, you're seeing down below. And of course, the structural dental cool things that we like to do all the time. And some of the foundational things we talk a lot about when doing our perio is the three fundamental things. I mean, water, probiotics, and enzymes. And in a sound, in a sound foundation of what we call the Trinity Wellness, surrounded by our food, vitamins, minerals, and essential fatty acids. These are simple foundational things you can support your patients with. So getting to the perio concept, biologically, the biologic philosophy that we carry for periodontal disease, we really want to change the ecology. I mean, because ultimately, our bodies are really little ecological pools. So we really want to go from a dominating anaerobiotic environment to an ecological shift, because in reality, remember, periodontal disease is just not bacterial. It is really a mixed infection to a more aerobic, healthier environment. And we use oxygen ozone for that. Anaerobiosis is really an altered pathologic state of oxygen metabolism. It's a fermentation process, and it's an uncontrolled oxidative injury. And this is kind of what we're seeing in periodontal disease. So we have oxygen metabolism, and then we have the effects of life, biotoxins, biocides. We have heavy metals, pesticides, solvents viruses, bacteria, fungus, parasites, all the wonderful things we see in our mouth, resulting in an anaerobiosis. Anaerobiosis, periodontal disease, is an uncontrolled oxidative injury, where we're finding vascular and lymphatic congestion, which we see all the time, and creating ecological conditions that are really oxygen-hating, acid-loving microbes. And this is our, to our advantage when we're using oxygen ozone therapy. So once again, anaerobiosis is oxidative 
lymphatic and vascular congestion resulting in what we see as periodontal disease. So what we do, of course, we want to do an ecological shift from this anaerobiotic state to a more aerobic state, and we use oxygen ozone therapy for that. So oxygen ozone really uh, fits well into the criteria for integrative biologic dentistry. It is safe and effective. It's non-toxic when used in a precise and calculated fashion. It's used for a brief period of time. It induces biologic effects, which is the most important component. Oxygen ozone comes and goes very, very rapidly. But it's the biologic effects that it induces in our system is what ultimately carries the day. And of course, it blocks infection. It improves oxygen delivery to the anoxic tissue, upregulates the humoral antioxidant system, and reequilibrates the redox system. And of course, the properties of oxygen ozone therapy it's a bactericide, fungicide, viricide, and it kills parasites. So that's not too bad. When you have to try to treat these mixed infections, what are we going to do? We always dump tons of antibiotics and clean the infection. So what comes in next? The fungal infection dominates. So you've seen these massive biologic and ecological shifts based on these pharmaceutical agents we're dumping in. But here, we're using the power of oxygen ozone to take care of all these components that we're dealing with. Of course, being a disinfectant and a sterilizer. Now, the modes of delivery in periodontal disease, and this is typical of what we do in oxygen ozone therapy, we use irrigation, insufflation, effusion, total saturation, and application. We're using irrigation. I want to thank Dr. Kennedy because a lot of his protocols, we took his stuff, of course, the best stuff we steal, and just using something different to use it. Irrigation with ozonated water. We insufflate the pockets, blow oxygen ozone into the pockets, with oxygen ozone gas, infusion of the soft tissues with oxygen ozone gas, infused with a syringe. We use a total saturation technique, which I'll describe down the road here, with oxygen ozone gas. And of course, we use application with ozonated oils. But the biggest issue when you deal with periodontal disease, as far as I'm concerned, is really the concept of this biofilm. So we have to be, have the capability in what we're doing or what we're delivering to break up this ecological environment is the biofilm. We have to break, have the capability of breaking that up. And of course, we know biofilms are really an aggregate of microbes with a distinct architecture. They are really cities. They do set up cities in this little gelatinous area. You have high rises, condos, you have street cleaners, you have garbage dumps. It's a whole community. And the beauty of it, they all speak the same language, these bugs. And the language is cytokines, the language of chemicals. If the whole world spoke the same language, things would be slightly different. And they all speak the same language. When the environment's right, hey, everybody, come on, move in. It's a great time. And once again, you know, in a dental biofilm, this is always a great one. It's a thick grouping of microorganisms that are very resistant to antibiotics, which is true, and antimicrobial agents that live on the gingival tissue, teeth, restorations, all over the place, your tongue, your mouth, everywhere. It's a bacterial plaque. Well, it's a little bit more than just bacterial. But the interesting thing is with, when these talk about these biofilms, is that bacteria and biofilms are a thousand times more resistant to antibiotics than the same bacteria that do not live in a biofilm. So we need something that, okay, it's going to be a biofilm disrupt, break up the biofilm disruption field, and then able to deal with the microbes of the pathogens that are in the oral cavity. And of course, today, we're more and more concerned about the oral systemic link, and I think this is becoming more and more important. We're realizing that even though when I was taught anatomy, you know, taught little pieces of our body, little, little micro pieces of our body, but the reality, and all you know this, is that we really are one organism. Everything is connected to each other. There are really no barriers. And we're seeing the oral systemic link, the infections in our head and our neck have a tremendous impact on the rest of our body. And this is you know, a diagram from Boyd Haley. We know the implications today, cardiac, respiratory, diabetes, premature births. We know all this, 
all these uh, factors are very, very important today. And of course, this biofilm, this colony, of course, lives adjacent in these pockets to set up a beautiful home in this plaque that lives right down in the pockets of these uh, dentition. And there are other primary and secondary sites of biofilm infection, the mouth, artificial hips, catheters. So this biofilm concept is really important. And there's another area that's a real important area of biofilm. Where in the dental office would we find a real problem with biofilm? Your dental units. Your dental units are packed with biofilm. So every time you turn on that handpiece, have fun drilling that cavity, woohoo, you're having a good time breathing that stuff. A friend of mine down in South America, they did a uh, electron uh, microscope scanning of dental unit water lines with and without ozonation. And this is important because this is a point I'm trying to drive to you by using these therapies. We are dramatically breaking up the, uh, the uh, biofilms in the oral cavity, which can be shown here. Maybe there. This is a dental uh, biofilm line, a, a dental unit line, where you can see on the bottom you have a biofilm. If you break open your units after a while, you'll see this type of biofilm in your units. The top piece is after they ran for about, I think it was three or four days, they ran ozonated water through the dental lines, and of course it broke up the biofilm and cleaned the lines out. Part of the training we do, we teach you to take some ozonated water and mix it with that little bottle that's attached to your units. A lot of people have that. By adding that little bit of ozonated water to your dental unit, number one, it really keeps the bacterial load down and keeps your units uh, very, very nice and clean. But another slick article came out in oral microbiology and immunology, the efficacy of ozone on survival and permeability of oral microorganisms. That's a great article in this recent study. We examined the effects of ozonated water on microorganisms' dental plaque. All the, uh, mo almost none of the organisms were detected after being treated with just ozonated water at a very low dose, which is four milligrams per liter, for 10 seconds. So after 10 seconds of exposure just to ozonated water, there was no sign of bacterial life in this project that they did. There we go. These are bacteria. We had bacteria exposure in this, in this particular study. It was four micrograms per cc, where you have bacteria plaque uh, being exposed to distilled water. The membrane integrity was totally intact. They were fine. After exposure, instant exposure to ozonated water alone, you start to see membrane integrity, integrity broken up and so you start to see bacterial cell death. After 120 seconds, the entire bacterial plaque was totally uh, broken up and destroyed. Here's another slick experiment they did with fluorescence and microscopic analysis. This is bacterial uh, bacteria here and the blue represents vital bacteria. This is distilled water. The green represents cell death, bacterial death. Ozonated water after instant exposure we see instant response and killing of the bacteria after two minutes, 120 seconds, basically totally wiped out of the bacteria in this experiment. Here in this part of it, they dealt with the plaque itself, the biofilm. Distilled water once again, ozonated water with instant exposure, the breaking down of this plaque, which is important. And of course, after two minutes of just ozonated water, which is a very low dose, believe me, we'll explain to you why in a minute, 120 seconds, the total uh, bacterial plaque is broken down. Okay. Once again, it's a great little diagram of the ramifications of the bacteria from root canals, periodontal disease, affecting, of course, cardiac health and well-being. This is an important factor that links us, once again, to the medical profession, back and forth. Getting back onto the ozone, the biophysics of oxygen ozone in vivo, the medical oxygen ozone gas upon exposure to living systems instantly goes into solution. When we take this gas, inject it into the tissue, it goes right into solution. The physics are dramatically different from injecting air. What's the difference between oxygen ozone and air? Nitrogen, different physics. The resultant is production of oxygen and singlet oxygen, which is reactive oxygen. 
and the resultant is the formation of two co-reactive products for production of hydrogen peroxide and lipid oxidative products, LOPs. The most important aspect of these pathogenic forms versus healthy tissue in our body is that these pathogenic forms commonly they all have weak antioxidant systems. So we create an oxidative burst, it overloads them, you get apoptosis. This results in immunologic enhancement because now we get complete recognition of these bugs, the immune system can respond to that. You're going to say in ozone, ooh, that's a kind of a foreign thing. But in Scripps Institute, they found out that neutrophils, antibodies from plasma cells, excuse me, ozone is produced by antibodies during bacteria killing and inflammation. So now antibodies, other than being a marker for bugs, is also has a killing effect by producing ozone. So we are producing ozone, believe it or not, in our body naturally. Other well, simple studies were shown just for informational purposes. All 63 different types of bacteria, Salmonella, Shigella, all those viruses, fungus, fungal pathogens, encrypted, encrypted uh, insisted protozoa. So from parasitic forms, the funguses, the bacteria, a tremendous amount of research has been done showing they all are dramatically affected by exposure to oxygen ozone on the microgram level. We're talking about micrograms of ozone versus uh, oxygen. Now getting into the wonderful world of dentistry, we have primary issues in dentistry. What are they? Trauma and infection. Infection in the form of bacteria, fungal, viral, and parasitic forms. Trauma, well, doing all the wonderful crown and bridge, we traumatize our patients and TMJ, everything else, but infection is one of the biggest issues we deal with. So when we talk about periodontal procedures, let's, let me bring you a tour of how we treat periodontal disease with oxygen ozone. One of the most important things that we do and we teach is that you stay within the standard of care in dentistry. You do all the things you normally do. We use oxygen ozone therapy to enhance our outcomes. We enhance our outcomes in root canals, periodontal disease, soft tissue lesions, cavitations. So we, we use this as an enhancement for better outcomes. So in periodontal enhancement protocols, I mean, we perform normal diagnostics. And everybody sees patients like this every day. Or maybe it's the water in New Jersey, I'm not sure. But anyhow, so our standard of care, of course, our risk assessments, prophylaxis, prophylaxis education, home care, root planning, scaling, irrigation, supplementation, pocket re reduction procedures, which I really don't do anymore and frequent recall appointments, microscopic analysis, and a microscope is really important. It's a wonderful tool to educate your patients and to see your progression as far as the patient's health and well-being. And of course now, we consider it with oxygen ozone therapy. In periodontal therapy procedures, you know, we do a comprehensive diagnosis supported by microscopic analysis, and we break our treatments usually out to four treatments, breaking up one quadrant at a time. You can do one quadrant, two quadrant, whatever you want to do, but we say for academic purposes, we break it up into quadrants, and the rationale, as you'll see, it comes along. Oops. There we go. The first thing we do, we just thank Dr. Kennedy for this, is really what we call sulcus pathogenic reduction lavage. We're taking the first actual procedure utilizing ozonated water at concentration of 20 micrograms per cc. Well, first thing we do is all the pockets are lavaged with ozone. The purpose of that is what? Reducing down the possibility of what? Septicemia through the rest of the body and getting the bulk of the bugs up and out. So we're using ozonated water. And the way we can make it at 20 micrograms per cc is we create the water as, in this particular case, we'd be running it at 80 micrograms per cc and divide everything by four, and this is to get your dosage in the water itself. So now we're going from four micrograms to 20, which is extremely safe and effective. There we go. Then we do, of course, our great mechanical depriment, and, you know, and then secondary lavage. We'll go each week, we'll take a quadrant, go up there, root plane it, scale it after we irrigate it. And if you want to be nice, you can use some anesthesia if you'd like. But then after that, once again, we'll re-irrigate the entire mouth. 
But then what we do is we take it to a higher level, and this is one of the slickest tricks because of little parasites. The parasites are not stupid little guys, those little amoebas we talk about. As soon as they see things changing, where do they go? They go hiding. They go running into the tissue. This is where we take our insufflation of the, of the sulcuses. We take the biophysics of oxygen ozone gas allows for rapid diffusion of a gas into a liquid. In this case, we take a maxi probe, slide it down to the pocket, and slowly infuse the oxygen ozone gas into the pocket itself at about 20 plus micrograms per cc. So we're irrigating, we're mechanically debrying, we're irrigating again, and now we're insufflating into the pocket itself. So on your left here, you know, using a maxi probe, we gently place the uh, probe up into the pocket, and we're you know gently insufflating the gas into the pocket, and we can see here we're getting you know peroxide formation. We just finished the brine this area. This is about one week later. We're taking the probe, sticking it up there, really getting no bleeding and no purulence out of the pocket itself, and that tissue looks pretty good over here right now. And uh, this is the perio case that we're treating. It's interesting with Steve, and you'll see his picture in a minute, that it really doesn't take that much bone to hold teeth in someone's head. But the trick is to get the infection out of those jaw bones. And that makes a significant difference. This is a denture case. We've, I've been treating him now for four years, and we've only lost three teeth in his head. And this, of course, before he came to me, he was a stroke victim, heart attack, and you can see why in this particular case. And what we do next is a vascular enhancement procedure. And the purpose is really to stimulate the re-regulation of the periodontal vascular plexus. We open non-functional or compromised vascular beds. And this is what happens when you have these high levels of toxins and high oxidative stress and periodontal disease that the vascular beds close down. The beauty of oxygen ozone, I mentioned this yesterday, is that you infuse the ozone. The ozone has a direct correlation to nitric oxide formation. And it used to be called endothelial relaxation factor. But now we realize it's nitric oxide. And this opens up the vascular beds, which is critical for success. We enrich anoxic tissue via oxygen infusion. We stimulate the localized release of cytokines to activate and regulate the immune system, support lymphatic drainage, and we stimulate, once again, the humoral antioxidant system in the, in the area. What we do is we take one cc infusions of 10 micrograms per cc. The research has shown that taking 10 micrograms per cc allows for a great vascular response, and we'll take Three spots, three spots on either side, six encompass each jaw, and we place it just in the buccal fold, right under like a subcutaneous infusion, one cc, one cc, one cc, and we do that. That has a tremendous result. Why? Because we know it's going into solution, and where is it going into solution? It's going into this vascular bed. It's being picked up and carried into the deep tissues to detoxify, enrich them oxygen-wise, and get any bugs that are hiding up in there. And these are the capillary loops of the epithelium, of the oral epithelium. These are the vascular beds that we ultimately want to reopen that are shut down. Through nitric oxide formation, these open up and get much better vascular flow to the tissue so the patient can heal themselves. And of course, phase one in treatment, you know, if we go back and we're treating, we have difficulty with little papillas, we could take a quarter cc of ozone, inject these specific areas. Another trick is around your crown and bridge. Sometimes you see that little red halo around that bridge work. You can actually put a little ozone right in there, just a little, uh, you know, apical to it, and just drop a little ozone. And that tends to clean up those infections, those little localized spots also. So you can tweak with little, little tweaks of ozone here and there. And, of course, assessment and recall, you know, after the four quads are done, we usually give them four or five weeks off, have them back. We treat any problem areas if the patient you know, checks out. We put them on normal three-month recall. Sometimes some of our patients really have major problems. They're back every month or two. And of course, our recalls, once again, we repeat the process, lavage, mechanical deprimate, lavage, insufflation, and infusions if necessary. With normal home care, 
You know, we teach them, of course, to maintain their mouth, and they brush with ozonated olive oil. They can floss with ozonated olive oil. The oil itself, oz uh, olive oil, is antibacterial, but the olive oil itself entraps oxygen ozone, and that's released once it melts into the tissue, and that works as a wonderful, wonderful agent for cleaning up infection. And you get the little jar right there. So you can see, basically, we're doing the standard type of perio treatments, but the difference is that we're just changing the medicament, if you want to call it that, that we're applying to the particular tissue. Now, this is a really cool technique. You can come by and visit us, and <coughs> we'll show you how we do that. This is called a total saturation technique. And for these advanced perio cases, this has been a real wonder. With this technique, we use to, use to treat caries, gingivitis, periodontal disease, root sensitivity. And we've also discovered by putting these rubberized trays, and a couple of, you know, a number of our students around here, they know what I'm talking about with these trays, prosthetic longevity. Because some of these more advanced, every patient that comes in that gets advanced prosthetics in our office gets these trays. So when they come in on their recalls, they always get an ozone treatment. And it just really enhances any problems with the prosthetics. So a total saturation protocol, we do a bulk pathogenic irrigation, clean everything out. We place it of the saturation tray. We attach this to an evacuation line. We slightly open it, attach it to the oxygen ozone generator. And what we do is really we're flowing oxygen ozone over the entire arch. And you're basically a 20 plus micrograms PCC. And this is a 10 minute treatment. Bob Harris and I worked on this technique for a number of years. We kind of look at, you know, standardized trays, small, medium, large, et cetera. It really didn't work out. We realized that every of these trays are custom made. We have a lab that makes these up for us and a number of our students. Basically, it's a rubberized tray with two ramps that has a peripheral seal that's created around the, the uh, rubberized tray itself. You try the tray in and out, you see the little peripheral seal right there. The peripheral seal, the purpose is to, once we start evacuation, it locks down and seals around the tissue. We have an in and out port, an in port for oxygen ozone, out port for going into the saliva ev evacuation system. And of course, once again, you see this is one of our early models. We're using a pro form in those days, an inflow of oxygen into one side of the tray, and the oxygen ozone flows over the dentition and the soft tissue on the other side. We irrigate with the you know, good old Viajet. And the Viajet I like because what we do is we put our ozonated water in the tank itself. And the interesting thing about ozonated water is when you're putting a gas into water, it depends on the volume and the temperature and the pressure. So we can take nice cold ozonated water. It contains a good amount of oxygen ozone. And in this particular unit, the heating element for it is at the handpiece itself. So it's warmed up to the last second, so it's releasing the oxygen ozone as you're irrigating it. And the unit's actually held up because you're always concerned that the, uh, the oxygen ozone will eat up the unit, but it really has. It's been holding up now for a number of years. And let's see if I can find the pointer. And this is where the heating element for the unit has been working out very nicely. And this is where we have the maxi probe attached on there. And this is the simple system setup. Here's the oxygen ozone generator with the tube coming in. And here's Steve with his little walrus things. These are little uh, saliva injectors that he's sitting there. This is the oxygen ozone going in, flowing over the tissue, and evacuating out the other side. A little bit closer look. And actually, it's great for cleaning out your evacuation system, by the way. You have a meticulous vacuum system after you have doing this treatment. Once again, this is an, a little bit older form of the oxygen ozone generator itself. We moisturize it because it's important to have moisturization of oxygen ozone to carry it into the tissue. And we can see here where the tray is in position in Steve's mouth. 10 minute treatment, sometimes a little bit longer if you like. With Steve, he was great. We did great, exp we tried it on for 40 minutes on him. We didn't kill him, so things were looking good. So we have the tray in position, the in, the out tray, and you see what happens here you'll see where with the suction and the technique, and this is really early on too, we get a peripheral seal. So it's perfectly safe and effective. For advanced perio cases, 
prosthetic issues, et cetera. This is a, a phenomenal treatment. And speak to the people who have trained with this and are using this, like Mark Berkowitz. Mark, how many did you make? 900 of these so far? Yeah. Right. So basically you see here where the tray's in position. So we're doing all normal things and we're enhancing. So when someone comes in with advanced perio and prosthetics, what we do after they get their normal hygiene recall appointment, they'll get an ozone treatment. So once again, oxygen ozone is safe, effective, non-toxic, with no side effects. It's able to directly be absorbed in the epithelium of the sulcus during insufflation treatment. So we can get our little parasitic friends. It's antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal, and antiparasitic once again. And there's my son from home. Doesn't he look like me? Yes, he does. Thank you very much. Should I read the disclaimer now? <laughs> I don't have any financial interest of a product in my talk with a large company, large company, or any company offering grant monies for this continuing dental and medical education program. Questions, if you want me to answer them. Go ahead. And when, you know, unfortunately, look, between yesterday and today, we kind of surfed through a lot of information. We spent a lot more detail on why and how, but I just want to give you a sense of what we're doing. Yeah, would you uh, tell us a little bit about the other uses of ozone, like, for example, with uh, just a regular rest restorative work where you disinfect a tooth before you replace a restoration and or with connection with extractions? Well... With the oxygen ozone over the last, it's been pretty close to 10 years now, and we, we, what happens is, and a lot of the users here will understand, is that you wind up using oxygen ozone all day long. It becomes an addictive thing in your practice because, once again, we're constantly dealing with infection. You know, we're using ozonated water for rinsing out extractions. I mean, a typical extraction I talk, kind of talked about yesterday with the bisphosphonates. We're irrigating extraction sites. Postoperatively, we're doing tricks like uh, when they can do an extraction, a simple extraction, if you want to call it that, we I mean, give them the mosinated oil to take home with them. Uh, before any restoration is placed in a, in a tooth, we ozonate it beforehand. You'll see when you place the ozone over a tooth, you'll see it actually get etched. What's wonderful about it with uh, even root canals, we fumigate our root canals. I think Rich Fisher says, oh, I didn't like the word fumigation, if you remember a number of years ago. But you know what? We're fumigating root canals. That's the only way it really works. Another trick is, is that if you're going to do a carious exposure, you don't have to. Stop. Ozonate it. Sterilize the dentin and restore the tooth. It will be perfectly fine. And believe me, we have a 9 million probably testimonies to that effect out here. But care, well, even if you have an exposure, it's not the, the exposure, mechanical exposure, that kills the tooth. It's the infection that kills the tooth. Ozonate it, you can cover it over whatever agent you like, and restore it. And believe me, 99% of the time, believe it or not, and that's a crazy dopey number, but it's true, that tooth will be perfectly fine because you're relieving the bacterial infection. And we've gone back, and there's a million studies that are being done that have shown that even with these caries, quote unquote, left behind, after you sterilize it with oxygen ozone, that dentin is hard as a rock if you go back in there within three to six months with no negative side effects on that at all. But the biggest thing, I mean, we, you know, when we teach them, you know, the, the docs go home and they do their perio, their endo, and their caries with nothing but that alone. It's just the whole paradigm of their practice. And the outcomes are greatly enhanced. Root sensitivity. Yes? We're going to uh, have more speaker, uh, speakers come up for questions and answers. And uh, Dr. Malika will be up here. Um, so let's give Dr. Malika one more hand.